Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the fabulous Mitch Mitchell's groove on Highway Child by Jimi Hendrix. And uh, the cool thing about this is that it goes from a really beautiful loping shuffle to a tight straight groove in the choruses. So shuffly verse, straight chorus and dealing with the transition between those two things is something that this song gives us an opportunity to get our teeth into. So let's have a quick listen to my interpretation of the thing and then we'll crack on with some explainy stuff. Something like that, anyway. So, what's going on here? The first thing we're going to look at is that shuffly verse groove. I'll explain what the notes are and so on. Um, and then we'll look at the straight groove. And after that, uh, let's take a look at some exercises that will help you sort of get used to that movement. Straight to shuffle, straight to shuffle, lopey to tight, however you want to think about it. First things first, the verse groove, we've got a quarter note on the hi-hat, I think it's an open hi-hat anyway, um, but yeah, really splashy, sloshy hi-hats, um, playing quarters, one, two, three, four. And it's a two-bar groove pattern, we've got the snare on the two and four conveniently enough, and then we've got the bass drum pattern, which is on the one, the three, the and of three, and the and of four, then the one of the second bar, uh, then the and of two, and of three, and and of four. So the one and all the ands on the second bar. Uh, I provided a PDF for you to download, so it might be difficult to keep track of hearing an explanation like this verbally, uh, even just watching me do it, but if you can read it with your eyes, that's helpful, isn't it? So check the description box for the PDF. Okay, so I'm going to play that nice and slowly. Um, and we'll just sort of get used to that. I'll keep the hi-hat closed just to make it easier to hear for me, if, if no one else. Uh, and we're just going to play that two-bar pattern. And then there's one more snare note to add after that. Okay, so we've got this. A wrong bass note snuck in there in the second bar first time around, so ignore that. The extra little thing we're going to add in there on the snare is we're going to play uh, a little upstroke on the and of one in the second bar. And we're going to do something called a pull out, which is we take the stick and pull it up and then throw it down again to produce a soft note followed by a loud note. So I pull the stick up and smack it down again. And as I'm pulling up, I get a free note there, like this. Now, in this... Why am I still surprised the drums are very noisy? Um, in this song, uh, you know, because it's shuffled, it's quite a fast rate of movement between the up and the down. So if you haven't done this before, uh, have a go at just practicing this a little bit. And there's all sorts of... Uh, sticking exercises and technical exercises that, that could get you doing that as well. If you check out my videos about uh, paradiddle grooves, for example, uh, there's some stuff in there that would help with pullouts and uh, there's all kinds of stuff uh, where that's useful. Anyway, we'll get onto that another time, but in the meantime you've got your pullout there. And that's going to be on the and of one in the second bar, so let's throw that in.
So there you go, that's the shuffly thing. Last step is to just relax your foot on the hi-hats there and let it produce a sloshy sound. How open that's gonna be, I don't know, it depends on your hi-hats and how sloshy you want your sound to be, I guess, but just a little bit, usually just relaxing the front of the foot to allow the uh, hi-hats to open a teeny bit. nice long sound out of that. Right, good. Next, we've got the chorus bit. We're playing the same quarter notes on a sloshy hi-hat there, and we're gonna be playing the bass on the one, the and of one, the three, the and of three, most of the time. Yeah, you can vary it a little bit between adding the bass on the and of one or the and of three and taking it out again. Uh, it's only four bars long though, so don't worry too much. Um, and then we're gonna be playing uh, a little funky snare ghost note on the art of two and the art of four, as basically as you like, even the E of three, if you want to. Now, uh, the challenging element of this is being able to keep the timing. Uh, if you're, You'll be used to playing this kind of funky groove with eighth notes on the hi-hat or the ride or wherever you want to play it. Uh, and that sort of gives you a bit of support for where you place your uh, ghost notes because you're kind of playing single strokes between the hands uh, when you're playing those 16s. When you play just uh, quarter notes on the hi-hat, you're a little bit without a handrail to help support you. So I'll show you what I mean. If I just sort of play the pattern as a, a regular eighth note beat, it's stuff like that. And so I've got right, left, right, left, right, left happening here. Uh, and it's a little bit easier to place the ghost note. When I do that as a quarter note, um, yeah, you need to keep time of that somehow. Now, if it was up to me, I would look at counting all the sixteenths. One iana, two iana, three iana, four iana. At least some of the time to give yourself a real sense of whether the notes are falling in the right place. Alternatively, you could get your metronome out and stick it on sixteenths and listen to that, how it lines up when you're practicing the pattern. So. To get the snare drum, I'll, I'll just do the hands now. We're gonna be going something like uh, one and two and a three E and four and one and two and a three E and four and up. You can add that as well. Let's do that with quarter notes again. I'm not going to slosh the hi-hats for the purposes of this demonstration. Okay, so that's really the thing you want to scrutinize. Maybe even record yourself doing this. It's always a really good thing for you to sort of, ah, what do I sound like? And it'll motivate you to, to be accurate, okay? And, you know, assess yourself, not, not with judgment. Be, assess yourself kindly, but brutally at the same time. Okay, so here we go again. Now I'm going to play a little bit more. Uh, I'll do it with a closed hat, but then I'm going to slosh the hats uh, to give you the authentic whole thing. I guess that's sort of an, an entry drug for a Little Miss Lover or something like that, is it? Am I remembering that correctly? Anyway, there you go. That's, that's the essence of that. With the sloshy hat, we've got... Um and so on and so on. Now, let's look at some of the sort of technicals about getting a timing right on this. How do we learn how to transition from the swung feel, from the shuffle to the straight feel without everything feeling a bit clunky, which is quite common. You know, it can be quite challenging if you've never tried going from a straight to a, a swung feel or swung to a straight feel in this case. So let's look at what we can do to, to make ourselves feel more confident and have a more solid grip of these two distinct feels. And what I'm going to show you now is, is sort of um, tip of iceberg stuff in a way. You could get into the whole concept in, in a lot more depth. A chap called Stanton Moore does some good content about this and uh, I think I'm going to 
you know, uh, build some, some videos based on those ideas as well and see what we can do. But for the time being, we're going to think about how we transition, right, from a shuffle. So when we're counting a shuffle, we still count one and two and three and four and, but we just let the and sort of wait a little bit longer. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. The numbers, our main pulse, stays the same, doesn't change between a straight feel and a shuffle. One and two and three and four. When I play the straight feel, or when I sing the straight feel, the ands fall exactly in between the numbers. One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and. So the first thing we're going to do is, I don't know, I'll tap my sticks together on the, the quarter notes on the numbers and we're going to practice counting, let's say, four bars with the shuffled feel, four bars with the straight feel. And two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and four, and one, and two, and three, 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 and four, and it's a very good idea to do this with the metronome actually, but I haven't got one at hand. I haven't worked out how to insert it into my, my audio feed just yet with the stuff I'm using. Anyway, that'll do. Once you can do four bars and four bars and you feel reasonably comfortable going between those, then obviously do two bars, two bars like so, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and so on and so on finally one bar and one bar this will test your metal and two and three and four and one and two and three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and so on and so on you can do that wherever you are when you're walking down to the supermarket for a pint of milk use your Footsteps as a metronome to keep count of the, the one, two, three, and four, your main pulse, and then count the ands in between as you're walking along. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and so on and so on. Really good way to practice rhythmic thingy bobs. Next, let's do it between uh, the hi-hat and the bass drum. We'll do the same exercise. I'll jump straight to two bars, two bars, because you, you get the idea, but you can do four bars, four bars. And... Again, pay attention to how it's the and that makes the difference here. The quarter note doesn't change anything. And one reason it's really good to uh, use a metronome, which <laughs> hopefully I don't, I don't prove it to you right now, but what is that it's quite easy to change the tempo when you're moving from one field to the next. I think in particular, going into the straight from the shuffled might tend to want to speed up a little bit. But let's see if I can get away with this and keep it accurate. So I'm going to play the numbers, the one, two, three, four on the hi-hat and the bass is going to play the ands both in the shuffle and straight variety, two bars, two bars like this. Hopefully my dignity is intact. One bar, one bar next. Now, I'm giving you a very quick snippet of that, but obviously sit with that for as long as you need to, to get really comfortable with transitioning from swung to straight, even with such a simple pattern like that, okay? Be patient, these things can take time, or maybe you get lucky and it happens for you straight away and you feel full command of the thing. That's cool, but if it doesn't, don't feel bad. Keep going and you'll get there. Now, let's add the snare on two and four to make it feel a bit groove-like, uh, and let's go two bars, two bars again.
one bar, one bar. Now, let's take the groove from the song in the verse, and we're going to play that in the original swung shuffle feel, and then we're going to uh, change, we'll play the same groove, but we'll translate it into uh, straight eighth notes and sixteenths, okay, instead of the sort of triplety thing. Here we go. Now, uh, I don't know, I can't help but feel like I might have pushed the tempo a little bit moving into the straight feel, but I'll, I'll be able to find out when I put the video in the editing thingy and we can have a look from outside. But work on that for a little bit um, and settle again. T take your time, let it settle. Finally, let's just do four bars, so two repetitions of the swung groove and then four bars of the straight groove as it appears in the song. So we'll go like this. and so on and so on. I don't know exactly I played what I said I was going to play, but you know, that's how it goes some of the time. You get the idea. So you, you're practicing that. You're not worried too much about following the arrangement of the song. You're just practicing to pay attention to the movement between those two feels. Uh, absolutely use a metronome for this. Clicking on the quarters will do you a good bit of good. Do you a good bit of good. You know what I mean. It's good for you. Anyway, that just about wraps that up. That's how we play Highway Child by Jimi Hendrix and how we get used to playing a shuffled feel and moving it into a straight feel and back again. I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it uh, somewhat educational or entertaining or something like that. Uh, I do appreciate you spending the time to watch this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing, uh, you know, click the like and subscribe button and all that good stuff, or don't do it if you don't want to, that's also fine. And uh, download the PDF from the description box below to be able to follow with your eyes what I'm doing in this lesson. There's a sort of transcription of the first verse and chorus of the song, so I don't think you'll find that helpful. Anyway, that's it. Very hot day in London here. I need to go and breathe, so you can go off and practice.